Good morning, everybody. Uh, excellent to be here, and, and thank you for the organizers. It's really a pleasure to be here. So topic today, uh, idea is to talk about IoT and, and in the buildings. Uh, it's very exciting, to be honest. And as we heard today, um, we all, I guess, are getting very excited to talk about uh, very advanced possibilities about the augment, augmented reality, about the drones and robotics. Uh, and I guess here today, the whole group are specialists in different kind of areas of technology. So let me start my presentation by establishing a new technical norm. That is, buildings of things. OK, this is a joke. So um, this is sort of a reality where we are today. Uh, maybe not in Finland. Maybe this is, situation is not that bad. But uh, let, I guess we can all agree uh, that the starting point, we are pretty much still in the basics. And, and we have still a long journey to go. So instead of uh, today talking about really advanced things and, and, and really getting uh, all uh, through, the, through the ceiling, uh, I thought it would be better to discuss a bit more the, about the basics and how all of we could actually influence making these exciting opportunities into reality. So starting a bit about the, the basics when we are talking about the Internet of Buildings. So when we're looking at the foundation of a smart building, of course, we need to have a proper technology in place. It has to be a good uh, heating and ventilation systems, all the lightning, lightning controls, etc. The buildings, generally speaking, should have lots of sensors in. It should have a proper controls, which are then connected to computers, having proper uh, software to run these all uh, systems. And through that, we should have really different kind of advanced platforms, user interfaces to different kind of users, whether they are user of the building or the technical part of the maintenance side of the building. And when everything works seamlessly together, we should basically get comfortable spaces where users are really satisfied. The building is run efficiently, and we get energy efficiency is what we are looking for. Uh, everything is connected. It's smart. It's safe. It's all that things. So this, of course, is pretty much we have buildings like in Finland is today. We have very good examples. But quite often, we are a bit more focusing on the building itself and the technology itself, even the features and benefits. Uh, I believe that we should also focus a bit more about two other topics, which are uh, construction process itself and then lifetime of the building. These two things are getting way too less attention, in my opinion, and I will return to these in the end of the presentation. Okay, let's uh, get the step back and talk a bit about why. Why we are doing in the first place. Why IoT in a building is a good thing. Last year, we did quite a big survey globally about the IoT in the buildings. And basically all, more than 2,500 responders said that maybe this is a no-brainer, but they said that because it really makes a business sense. It really makes a business sense. And I think this is really critical, critical here, what we are talking about. So where then, where then the optimism is coming from? Of course, there are many things, but it changes how we, how we live, uh, how we work. It gets everything connected. So it, it really gets new things to us, what we are needing in our daily, le daily lives. Uh, of course, uh, we also have an in environmental impact. When we run more efficient buildings and processes, it's more uh, environmental efficient. We get less polluted and, and so forth. One of my personal favorites actually here is on the top left corner. It actually enhances customer experience. This is the thing, as I said in the beginning, we don't really pay enough attention. Then the biggest number here, 20% uh, responders actually believe that it will make uh, asset utilization more efficient. So I decided to use a bit more time on that topic. So if you look at the facility managers, over 60% of them uh, believe that when they are managing and maintaining their building, uh, IoT will play a bigger role in there. And the same group of people are seeing that there will be bigger capital investment in this space. So good news in that sense. Uh, what is then the starting point? Unfortunately, the starting point is not too good. 
or the other way around, maybe actually it is an opportunity. So currently looking at this building maintenance side, uh, the tools are not that good. And when the tools are not too good, data is not good enough for people to make good decisions. So where that leads, people have to make decisions based on poor data, poor tools. And that actually leads to situations that we all are rather reactive than proactive. So we could actually prevent problems happen before they happen. Um, so why it is not happening? I guess no, number one, the usual suspect is the money. Uh, we think that we don't have money uh, to do such investments. On the other hand, maybe this money perspective is quite often only in the capital uh, investment part, and we are not paying enough attention to looking at the whole life cycle value. I will come back to that later in the end. Uh, the other, to other topic, people feel that they don't have enough internal resources and competencies to drive this area. And here, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that all you can actually help. Here are a lot of uh, technology people, IT experts, and, and you could actually help quite a lot traditional uh, construction people, con traditional real estate people to help in this matter because the world is really getting more com complex. But the good thing is that all these facility managers actually, they see that the investments are coming more in this area. There will be more investment in a connected services. There will be more invested investment um, in a technologies are rather preventive, preventing problems to happen, if you like. And here it actually gets really, really exciting. Um, in our survey, the biggest number of people really saw that analytics will change the game. There will be much more analytics in the building space in the future than it is today. And um, it's not only in a cost saving side or how we're looking better energy efficiency in our buildings, but these analytics actually provide more information uh, from the consumers, from the users of the building, and that helps us to provide and develop better services for the building in the future. So I think that's really where all this is getting excited. And where the benefits are really coming, uh, of course, there are probably multiple benefits, but really take a simple point. Number one, users are just getting more satisfied with the buildings. They don't want to move out, pretty important. Then if you look at the facility manager side of the, of the building, uh, they get better information. They can do preventive maintenance before the problems actually are happening in the buildings. Then the operational side, when people get better data, better tools, they can actually focus their time on action instead of data mining, which actually is pretty much the case today due to the poor processes and, and tools in place. And then finally, through better transparency and visibility, um, we, we are better in our cost management, which obviously is really important for the, all the building owners and, and investors. We have quite a bit uh, real life cases where we have evidence significant benefits in different areas. Of course, the no-brainer side basically is uh, the energy savings in the heating and ventilation side. Significant savings there. Uh, other point, which is maybe less uh, in attention, is the different kind of complaints what the building users are giving. Big drop there when we have better analytics in place. And then the final the third point, uh, we need to ha have less uh, maintenance and, and, and we can avoid um, let's say, maintenance accidents in a building. OK, uh, lots of benefits, for sure. Uh, but while IoT and connectivity is really driving the benefits, of course, the coin also has the other side. For sure, when everything is connected, it also creates different kinds of risk and problems what need to be managed. And uh, according to our survey, the really big number of people believe that cybersecurity will be a, one of the key challenges that we need, to have, we need to tackle. We had a really exciting seminar last week, and, and uh, Mikko Hyppen from AppSecure, I think he put it really well, that internet, generally speaking, and now IoT, uh, has created a lot of good, but also a lot of bad. But far, by far, the good things are sort of overweighting the bad things. And I think it's also critical here. And the risk actually can be managed pretty well. When we talk about um, cybersecurity in the buildings, 
I think we can again take here quite many approaches, but I selected to take here uh, three main things. Um, you can you can start you can look you can have the product level for the cybersecurity, beating different kind of building technologies, different kind of equipment that are used. But this is pretty far from the investor and owner. It's quite far from us. Of course, we can look at the suppliers who are there, who are big enough, who have the certificates, who have the uh, have the standards, who have maybe the economies of scale to provide really reliable products and services. The second part is a bit closer, and this means by developing a solution, meaning developing the buildings and technology, technologies within the buildings. Uh, this is a bit closer, but there where, where we are getting the user needs, where we are getting the building needs, where we are getting local regulations, this is a little bit closer to us. But by far, the most important part of this is really the secure operations of the building. So when the building is built, when the building is used, and if there is a security, cyber security breeds, for sure it's a building owner whose name is in the titles. It's not about the technology, it's not about the nuts and bolts which are being in, <laughs> installed in a building, but it's really the owner of the building who gets the damage. And I really see that the best insurance, if you like, for the building owner is to demand, for example, cyber security certificates from the companies that are supplying connected services. I saw that as an insurance, so why wouldn't you demand? I would turn the other way around. All should be really putting on, on that level. All right, uh, in the beginning I promised that I come back to, to, to other two points from the building itself and technology itself. So the construction value chain and then the user involvement. So let's start with the first. Let's take an investor who today uh, gets an idea that I would like to build a building. I'm really uh, advanced, I'm really uh, forward looking, and I would like my building to have really satisfied end users. And when they're really satisfied end users, the occupancy rate uh, remains high. The building communicates this smart grid, it takes all this demand uh, consumption into, into account. It has its own uh, renewable energy sources, it's actually energy positive, so it, it produces more energy than it creates. Great. Uh, it also has uh, good technology to handle different variation during the lifetime of the building. It's not too expensive when the people and, and the companies within the building want some modification to happen. And then through all this, uh, the asset value remains high, it's kind of sellable in the market, and, and I'm very satisfied. It utilizes big data for enable different kind of services. So, sounds quite exciting, right? Number one challenge, in my opinion, uh, here is the traditional construction value chain, where me, as myself here, as an investor, I look for a developer who looks for a construction company, who then further looks for the architects, consulting engineers, uh, technical uh, integrators, and, and so forth. Unfortunately, this process is quite siloed. It doesn't really take integration into account, and it sort of bits, uh, it divides the whole building into nuts and bolts. That's how it's procured. And when you're looking at the, let's say, end game, it, which is really integrated, which is really sort of advanced, unfortunately, this process is not supporting the end game, if you like. And here again, I think all of us here can help. Investors, in my opinion, should really demand more. They should participate more when the building is being built. They should not outsource all the decision-making uh, aligned the chain. So here, all these technical experts who are here today and the investors can actually demand better buildings. So then, last point, the user involvement. I take here an example, Singapore. I've had possibility to visit there a couple of times in, in the past few years. I think they do an excellent job. So, for, of course, Singapore is a bit different case. It's really a small country, a lot of people, a bit easier decision-making from the political point of view. But anyway, uh, key stakeholders are really involved. I mean the state, uh, developers, architects, designers. But moreover, they actually take users pretty much in the loop. When you go to walk in the big shopping malls, you actually see there are big dedicated areas which are reserved 
for exploring the smart cities, smart buildings, what it actually means. And not only explore, but I also invite people to develop such services. So they really want to involve people that let's make this work together. And I think they do a really fine example there. And uh, this is just an example of one website, what they are providing. So through different kind of websites, they are giving this visible to the users. So come here, co-create with us. Let's create a better country, town, a building. So I think we have to really take users more in, into loop. If you think about this life cycle, seven years from now, it will be our children who are now in the age of seven, totally like a dicky native. So seven years from now, they really demand different kind of buildings what they are today. So finally, I would also like to show one example that it's also possible in Finland. It's possible in Europe. And I have here one example of uh, one, one project in Holland. It is called the edge because we're on the edge of technology. When the board asked me to construct this building, I made sure it has everything like Internet of Things, uh, sensors, uh, sustainability, and integrated those into a data analysis platform. My name is Eric Ubels. I've been the CIO for Deloitte for 23 years. Within Deloitte, I'm in charge for uh, facilities in real estate, but I have a huge passion for technology. The smart structure of Schneider Electric is basically the whole backbone of this building. The building is uh, obviously the most sustainable office building in the world. The way the architect designed it, using the natural part of the sun and sunlight and solar panels, it produces about 102% of the building's energy. The most important thing for a smart structure from Schneider is the single backbone so we would be able to connect everything. But also to get the data into a data analysis platform. And you can learn and therefore you can make smarter algorithms, even lowering the, the energy further. But it's not just sustainable, but it's also extremely comfortable uh, to be the best workplace for our people. Schneider Electric being a single integrator for us, it worked extremely well. Okay, so it's all possible. So to conclude, maybe IoT and the buildings, really, really exciting. Uh, first, Technology is available, what we so want. Uh, number two, owners and all these technology experts, as you hear, we should take more accountability, responsibility during the construction uh, chains. And finally, you all can help support, so please be active. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Do you, think, uh, do you think that IoT would help to improve the quality of building? Because we have lately have, have had very sad examples how bad things can be. Yes, yes, for sure. I don't think we really uh, utilize these all, all opportunities, as I said, in a construction mm -hmm. uh, value chain mm -hmm. and, and during that time. And, and, and for sure, IoT and different kind of sensors that we already can afford to put mm -hmm. our water boilers mm -hmm. So we should also use those kind of sensors in the building construction elements. And I've also heard already some kind of initiatives in that area. So for sure, mm. I just didn't touch it in this mm. topic here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. Thank, Thank you. you.